All right. So uh, just going to give you guys just a minute to settle in. But uh, we've got a pretty big crowd here, and I'm very excited to look out and see some familiar faces, actually. So I've been Looker for about two years, and uh, my name is Russ Garner. I'm on our professional services team. And I'll tell you, I'm actually really excited to talk to you guys today because we've got a subject here that's not only near and dear to my heart as a Python programmer, but also it's something that I don't think gets enough credit in terms of what it can do to take your Looker installation to the next level in terms of being data-driven. Right? So I want to talk today a little bit about integrating Looker with advanced data science tools like Python and R. Right? And before we get into the real weeds on the subject, I want to talk a little bit about this age-old debate of what is a data scientist anyway. Right now, I've consulted a lot of authoritative sources, done research, looked at resumes, and talked to experts. And I've come to the conclusion that a data scientist is really just any other data analyst, but they live in California. <laughs> now, I was, I was told that that joke would go over a little better when we had our user conference in New York. Uh, but I kept it in anyway because I'm a maverick. So anyway, in all seriousness, what is data science? What is a data scientist? It's any time we're getting statistically rigorous in the face of uncertainty with our data. right? And I don't need to convince you guys of all of the use cases here because it's an ocean of potential things that we can do with this. right? Forecasting, sales, events, volumes of any business process, the headcount required to meet those obligations, the infrastructure needs, which of my transactions is most likely to be fraudulent, right? Given what we know in a current situation, how much risk are we bearing, right? These are all kinds of questions and mission critical types of analysis that we can really target and be very, very precise in the kinds of output that we're using. Right? And a lot of times that precision is the difference between companies that are able to succeed and do really well with their scarce resources and those companies that don't do as well. Right? So incredibly important. And let's examine then briefly what the data scientist has been doing historically. Right? So I guess the several prerequisites that we have here are first, uh, have data. Right? So that's pretty important. And then we also need to have a hypothesis of some kind, you know, something that we want to validate and test. And then the data scientist can embark on that discovery process. Right? And the form that this usually takes is running lots of SQL queries. Right? So you need to go into your system and say, hey, when we stood it up, we had all these test records. Right? We need to filter those out. That defect we had in January, that information doesn't count. Right? What does a single row mean in my analysis? Right. I need to make sure that I'm very scrupulous about all of those definitions. I need to make sure that my averages and my sums are coming out correctly as well. Right. And so all of this modeling is a tremendous amount of work that the data scientist is doing. And they're not even done yet. Because they might be running those SQL queries from their R or Python scripts to fetch that from the database. Or they might be outputting a CSV and importing it into R or Python. And after they've done that, they embark on the actual data science process, which is really something that's fundamentally iterative. Right? I first take a set of fields, a set of data, and I'm going to go through and try to validate that hypothesis. But I may want to go in and pull in another feature from my data, another field that might be more predictive. Right? And so I should be actually going back to the database and reworking and doing that cleaning, prepping, and modeling over again. Right? And so that's why there's this kind of industry truism that data preparation accounts for actually 80% of the data scientist's time. And the other 20% is complaining about how long that 80% took. <laughs> right? So um, once you have gone through this process, right, iteratively sought you know, a good predictive model that you're going to actually be able to use to glean insights and you know, make better use of your resources internally, really accomplish something, there's just one problem, right? Because if I want to communicate this out to a wide audience, R and Python are expert level tools, right? Good luck sending a Python notebook or an R script to the C-suite. I don't think that they're going to be able to get much actionable insight out of something like that, unless they're data scientists too, right? So the data scientist has always been in this fundamental conundrum 
where now they're having to summarize, you know, maybe in a white paper, maybe in an executive presentation in PowerPoint, or maybe putting out a bunch of Excel workbooks that have probabilities, forecasts, and goals for their sales managers, right? And it's something that, at the end of the day, is really static. So what happens when we introduce Looker into this workflow? Well, there's really two substantive changes, right? And so the first is really that, you know, all that cleaning, prepping, and modeling that we were talking about, chances are you've already done this inside of your LookML model, right? And so why not leverage what the data analyst has already done? Looker has a RESTful API that's going to allow you to go in and grab those queries, those individual looks or reports, and actually bring those directly into R and Python. And we've got a bunch of code examples. I'm going to make sure that those are available for you guys after the talk. And I'm happy to you know, answer questions over email if you guys are trying to work on that yourselves. But it makes this process dramatically easier because you're leveraging work that's already been done. And now when you pull that information into R or Python, you can really have the data scientist focus on getting that analysis right and nailing it. And when they conduct that iterative process, bringing in new fields and testing new features to get a good model fit, they're going to be able to go back into Looker and simply adjust their look, bring in new fields, make changes, change the filter criteria without having to haggle all that manual SQL. Right? So it's a tremendous speed up and a huge redu reduction in that 80% of their time. But I actually don't even think that it's the most important change in this workflow. Because the next thing that we can do, you know, I call this completing the loop. And it's where we take the output probabilities that we've generated as part of our model, and we actually return those to the database. Right? Now, if I put those inside of my database and they're tagged, now I can model those inside of Looker and allow everybody in the company to get in in the way that they're used to exploring data and leverage those insights. Right? Maybe that's tagging individual records that are likely to be fraudulent. Maybe it's bringing in estimation for different entities in your database. Whatever your output, you can find a way to model it in Looker. And it really means that you can start to have your end users use all the things that they know and love in Looker effectively and interactively in ways that they couldn't before. So what I want to do is actually show you how we would do this using a live example. And we'll just use our traditional e-commerce uh, company. You know, we've got orders, order items, users, and the like. And our proposition is we want to figure out which of our new customers, you know, maybe people who have been around for 30 days or so, are the most likely to continue spending money. And we can use that to guide a limited marketing budget and help make uh, you know, more effective resource decisions and you know, outpace the competition. So what I want to do is just transition over here to the Looker environment. And let me just boost my screen here. So we'll take a little tour through the model. And again, I've just got orders, order items, products, users, and user facts. And any of these are going to be eligible things that I can bring in through the API to conduct my analysis. Right, so this user fact table, um, you, know, you guys are probably all accomplished lookamelistas. So you've probably done you know, your fair share of customer facts and user facts tables. But we're just grouping by individual user IDs and then calculating some uh, you know, just measures here across all time, you know, all of their customer behavior. So for each individual user, how much total revenue did they generate? How many total orders did they place? And then also, how much of that total revenue was in the first 30 days? How many of those orders were in the first 30 days? Yeah, you got it. OK, so yeah, and this is just a regular uh, fact table. We've also got our you know, users table. This has some demographic information. These are things I may want to experiment with. Uh, like geographic uh, fields, like country, city, state. I've got age group here, uh, their lead source, a bunch of other things that might be interesting as we consider what are the most predictive features um, as we go through the data science analysis. And so all I've done is simply take these different fields 
and put together a couple of looks. Right? So the first one, I'm going to pull our historical data. So these are customers who have been around for at least a year, and I've just captured a couple of those fields that we mentioned. Right? So how many orders did they place in their first 30 days? What's their age? Ultimately, how much revenue did they produce? Um, each individual user ID, and how much of that revenue was in the first 30 days. And now I can also create the same view of the information by just modifying a filter and selection criteria. So now we're looking at customers that have about 30 days worth of history. Right? So these are people who have been on the platform for just a little bit, placing orders. Is it going to be worth retargeting them? Right? And so now I've got all the data that I need. It was really quick to put this together because it was already existing LookML. So putting these uh, reports together was a, a no-brainer. It was very, very quick. And now I've got everything that I need to actually pull that information into the data science tool. And this would work equally well with something like R. We actually have an SDK that allows you to access the API, all of the API endpoints from R natively. It's called Look R. And it's really easy to use, and we've got some good documentation on it. But you could also use Python um, and any other statistical programming language that you could use to access a RESTful API. And we've got a Swagger code gen process that'll allow you to create a full SDK for any of those languages. But in this case, I, I'm just doing really dead simple data access. And so what I'm going to do is just do a little bit of housekeeping and setup here inside of Python. I'm accessing a configuration file that has um, API secrets and things like that. But now we've got this uh, Looker API client here. And this is just a little code stub. Um, you know, because we're zoomed in here, I have to scroll. But this is a really small amount of code. And that's really all that's required in order to access Looker and start pulling reports. Right? And I'm going to make this code available for you guys so you can take a look at it afterward. But then I just instantiate that uh, stub class. And then now I've got something that I can actively start pulling those reports. And so what I want to do first is grab our historical customers. And in this case, uh, I'm just going to grab look 292. And that's really simple. That was just uh, our historical data here, good old look 292. Right? And our new customers, so those are people that we have at least 30 days worth of data. And that's just going to be look 293. Right? So look 293. And so as simple as that, and in that little code, I was able to you know, pull in those two reports and take advantage of everything that I had in the LookML model. And there's one other thing that's actually really convenient here. There's no additional massaging of the data that's required. So that API response object that's coming back can actually be natively bound to a pandas data frame, or it could be bound to a data frame in R. Right? So you can just take that response, and then it's already ready for statistical analysis. So it's extremely easy. And so I just did that for our historical and our new customers. Right? And so I don't want to talk too much about the methodology here, because there's a thousand ways to do this kind of, of thing. And, and I would leave it to your expertise. And you want to figure out what's the right type of analysis that you should be doing for any given use case. But here, I'm using a multiple linear regression to just simply take a look at, hey, the handful of different uh, independent variables that we brought in from that look, which of those is going to help us uh, get a nice prediction for their total revenue. Right? And so I'm just accessing the data frame for our historical customers. And what you'll notice here is that these names actually map back to our LookML names. So like users.age, that maps to this independent variable that I'm setting up here, users.age. So it's actually really easy to leverage your model and have like consistent nomenclature and just pull that stuff in. That's going to be your data access logic inside of your data frame. So then I go ahead and set up this uh, summary. This is where the iteration would happen. right? I want to go in and keep reworking this, trade out fields, look at different selection criteria, until I get a model that's giving me really good and highly fit coefficients. Right? And so again, this is ironically kind of an art rather than a science. Now, once I've got a model that's going to be pretty predictive, 
What I want to do is now take our new data set, right? So these are our new customers, and I want to use that to produce a prediction for how much they're going to spend. Uh, so then I take those same independent variables that I had set for um, you know, our historical customers, and then I use that to generate a prediction for each one of those user IDs in my new customer set. And so I just capture this in an output variable, and now I've got each of those new customers, how much we expect them to spend. And this is where we do the last, and I think most important thing, is completing the loop. Right? So I'm going to take that output variable and actually just bring it back into the database. So I'm taking uh, our outputs, and I'm putting it into this really simple table, just LTV predictions. So we just have each user ID and then their predicted spend. Now, you could get a lot more sophisticated in how you're capturing and storing these probabilities. You might want different versioned model runs and different things that you can filter. But in this case, I think I can get away with just having something that's dead simple. And so now I'm going to bring that back into Looker. And so I've just modeled it. I just captured that, created the view, and created a couple of measures here. And then I can join that back into our Explorer and say, OK, well, these LTV predictions, uh, I can just join on user ID. And now this is something that's going to be accessible inside of my Explorer. So now anybody in the company can now come into the Explore screen and start leveraging this view that we have here. Right, so I'm just going to filter to look at customers that we have a prediction for. And let's look at how much we expect them to spend all time. Right, and so for this cohort, it's about 23,000. I can now go to our user fact table and see how much did they spend in total. You know, so this is like the actual you know, versus the projection. And they spend about $13,000, right? And so then I can have a measure like, well, what's their remaining projected spend, right? And so $9,300, that's about how much revenue is still on the table for retargeting. And if I want to, I can also come in here, because of the way that we're joined, and add in the customer information that's going to let me identify individual customers. Right? So I can pull in their email address, uh, first name, last name, and I could sort by the highest remaining spend, and then maybe set some kind of break-even point for which of these customers are going to be worthwhile to continue marketing to. Maybe I could set an alert as a marketing manager. Uh, there's a huge number of ways that we could end up using this. Right? So I think you'll find that when you guys conduct these types of analysis, you bring it back in, you model it in Looker, your end users are going to find lots of different ways to use these probabilities in their daily workflows. Right, so let's just hit the accelerator pedal real quick and go look at a dashboard that we created for the marketing team based off this information. Right, and so now I can see what my nurture cohort is, how much they were going to spend, what you know, progress are we through their kind of lifetime spend, is it worth retargeting to them, get that broken down by lead source, and then folks can come in and actually download the literal data and start bringing that into the marketing tool of their choice to begin the retargeting process. Right, so that's the power of what we can do when we start taking the data scientist's output and analysis and make it explorable for everybody in the company. And if I could just emphasize this point one last time, I'd want to wrap up by saying that Looker helps in two primary ways, right? So it makes the data prep process dramatically easier. It smooths that iteration. It lets you take advantage of the source of truth. And then it also allows you to communicate out the output of that data scientist to everybody in the company so that they can use all the features in Looker uh, that they know and love and use on your regular data in a more effective way.